Hey friends, Susan Gregory here, and welcome to the Daniel Fast for Weight Loss Bible Study. I am so glad you're here. I welcome you to the first of four Bible studies that I will be teaching over the next several weeks. This is where your journey begins. You may already be started on the fast or you're beginning in the next day or two, but this is where your journey begins in your lifestyle of faith. So first, let me first introduce myself and so that you can get to know a little bit more about me if you're not familiar with me. First of all, my name is Susan Gregory, like I mentioned, and I am best known for these books, the Daniel Fast for Weight Loss and the workbook that goes along with it. I started writing about the Daniel Fast in 2007. I cover some of that in the Daniel Fast for Weight Loss book and even more of it in this Daniel Fast book. This has been an absolute blessing for me. I have been able to help literally hundreds of thousands of Christians throughout the world experience a successful Daniel Fast and it is such a blessing. Now what happens with that is I hear from people. I have been receiving messages from people since 2007 about their experiences with the Daniel Fast and out of that came the Daniel Fast for weight loss. So many people talked to me and told me about their experiences, about losing weight, about their health improvements, their aches and and pains going away. And so when a time in our history when so many people struggle with weight, I thought I need to get this word out. The Daniel Fast is a powerful and excellent way to jump start your plan for health. Now the Daniel Fast for Weight Loss is not a diet book. Instead it teaches you how to get in touch with who you are in Christ. How to submit your physical body to the Lord. How to get over cravings and all of those temptations and enter into a lifestyle of health. That is the Christian lifestyle. So you are going to enter into the experience of fasting. It's a faith-driven experience that will change your life forever. That is available to you if you get into it. So I use proven principles that you can put to use that will end cravings and food addictions and will totally change the way you look at your body, the way you look at nourishing your body and the purpose of food and eating. It is something wonderful and pleasurable, but there are some things that we need to do to be in good health. So the Daniel Fast is your kickoff. It's what gets you started on this lifestyle of health. We center on God and your relationship with him during the fast. And these, as you learn more about being in God's presence, about meeting with him, about his love and care for you and the many blessings he has for you, then you want to take this into your everyday experience after the fast. Also, after the fast, that's when you add some other healthy foods and you continue to use the principles that you learn while on the Daniel Fast for Weight Loss. So first, let me just give you a little bit of a, of a glimpse into my own fasting experience. I started fasting in the 1990s. A friend at work told me that he had had a fast that was so ex such a great experience for him, such a deep spiritual experience for him, and I wanted to have that kind of experience. And so he taught me about fasting, and that's when I first started. I went on a three-day water-only fast, and then over the years I continued to use various types of fasting. In that process, I started using the Daniel Fast. I didn't invent the fast. I only teach about it, write about it, and encourage people about the Daniel Fast. But it was in December of 2007, I was going through quite a change in my life, and the Lord gave me a message. It was a message in my spirit, and he said, write about the Daniel Fast. And so that's when I got started. I knew that in December that we were coming into January where literally hundreds of thousands of people would start fasting. I was going to start fasting in January, so I thought, how do I get the word out? Well, that's when I looked at doing a website. I had never done one before. I had written a lot of books. I had um, written for many Christian ministries, so I was familiar with writing, but I had never done a website. I knew how to use a computer, but I'd never done a website. So 
what I did is I started early in the morning and worked until late into the night learning how to create a website, learning how to get the information out there. Well, it was an unexpected experience explosion of people coming to my simple little website. Today that website has had more than 14 million visitors to it. 14 million visits. And so it was totally unexpected. It launched me into something I never would have imagined for myself. Since that time I have been able to interact with hundreds of thousands of people all over the world. I've written multiple books about the Daniel Fast. I've been on television. I've been on lots of radio. And I've got my websites where today alone, 74,000 people visited the website. But this is the thing. And this I hope you see for yourself also. When God told me to write about the Daniel Fast, he knew what was going on. Yes, I was amazed by it all but he knew. And so when we pray to him, when we ask him to bless us, when we ask him for solutions, he has the end in mind for us. Our job is to take that first step. So as you enter into this experience of extended prayer and fasting, open your heart to the Lord, ask him for what you need, and then listen. It may take a few days. It may take some time to hear that answer. It doesn't always come immediately. But then listen and then do whatever he tells you to do. I've been able to engage with men and women from all over the world. And they started writing me letters telling me about their positive experience with the Daniel Fast. It was a totally unforeseen benefit. I didn't know it at the time when I first started writing about the Daniel Fast. But so many people experienced really powerful, positive impacts with their health. First, weight loss. People said, I have never been able to lose weight, but on the Daniel Fast, I lost 20 pounds or I lost 15 pounds. I've never been able to stay on a diet, but this was so easy for me. And that's because we are joining our hand with God. We are allowing the Holy Spirit to work in us as we submit ourselves to Him. People have improved health. They have increased energy, healings, and major health improvements, lower cholesterol, being able to control blood sugar, the people that have type 2 diabetes, being able to control blood sugar with food alone. It is so powerful. Aches and pains and all kinds of things going away as we give our body the food that it needs for nutrition. We are giving our bodies during the Daniel Fest the food food God created for the bodies he created. We are undergoing a natural detox with all of the water we're eating, the natural foods, the clean foods that we're consuming, and so our body is getting rid of all the junk. So first let me give you a really quick overview of the Daniel Fast. This is covered in all of my books, but I want to give you this quick overview. So the Daniel Fast is based on the fasting experiences of the Old Testament prophet Daniel. You can read Daniel 1 and Daniel 10. Those are the primary passages of scripture where we find the guidelines for the Daniel Fast. Also, typical Jewish fasting principles are added to come up with the guidelines. Now, what are the foods that are allowed on the Daniel Fast? Foods grown from seed. That's what Daniel ate. That's what he said in Daniel 1. He said, give us only water and pulse to eat. Pulse is food grown from seed. So that means no animal products at all, but fruits, vegetables, whole grains, beans, rice, nuts, seeds, healthy oils, spices, herbs, all of those are allowed. Salt is allowed. Those are all okay on the Daniel fast. Now, what are the foods that are restricted? any kind of sweeteners, chemicals, deep fried foods, any kind of animal products, even fish, dairy, eggs, poultry, any kind of anything that comes from a breathing organism is not allowed on the Daniel fast. And plus, no sweeteners, no chemicals, no food additives, no caffeine, no juice. All of those foods are not allowed. Now, you can use juice in a recipe. That's fine. But the only beverage on the Daniel fast is water. 
You can use plant-based milks. Those are okay for recipes or on your cereal. But again, the only beverage on the Daniel Fast is water. You can put some lemon in the water or maybe some slices of cucumbers to freshen it up. You want to always make sure that you can still look at that glass and call it water. If you've got so much in it that it turns over to juice or it slants over to tea, then it is not allowed. The Daniel Fast, the only beverage is water. Now this is the thing. You don't want to get so focused on the food and what you can't have and what you can have and creating all these exotic kinds of meals within the Daniel Fast guidelines. You don't want to get so consumed with the food that you miss out on the powerful spiritual blessing that the spiritual fast offers to you. The Daniel Fast is a method of spiritual fasting. Fasting is a spiritual discipline, so don't get so consumed about the food. It's a spiritual experience and not a Christian diet. So many people get so caught up in the food. Don't do that. Keep your meals simple. Don't make it about the food. Be wise, be calm, be prayerful, and enter into this spiritual experience. Yes, you have to deal with the food because we are eating differently. It's a partial fast where some foods are eaten and others are restricted, but don't get so caught up in it that you, you lose out, you miss out on the benefits, the great blessings that God has for you you want to make sure to get ready for the fast. So prepare for the experience. One of the things that I like to do is think of it as like a vacation. When you're ready to go on a vacation, you have a different mindset. You know you're going to be doing different activities. You're going to wear different kinds of clothes. You might be eating different kinds of food. You're going to be involved with, have different supplies, different things that you take along on a vacation. The same type of thing happens when you enter into a fast. It's a different experience. You're entering in, you're crossing a threshold over into a different kind of experience. So you want to make sure to prepare for it. Get the foods that you need. Get the study materials you need. Make sure you put aside enough time to be in prayer and study and time with God. And we'll talk a little bit more about that in just a minute. But think of it as like a vacation. And this is the deal. There are so many unexpected surprises and lessons and blessings for you. Let me give you an example that I, that I use and I shared in the book. My sister Nancy and her husband Ron, this is a story about them. Now, this was a few couple years ago in October. I was down at a little resort in Mexico. It's right on the beach. I've been going there for 27 years. I go on an annual writing retreat every year in October. And so I was down there during that time. And my sister sent me an email and said, oh, Ron and I will be down there in a few months. And she told me the dates that she would be there because they go to the same little resort. It's right on the beach, just a very quaint, simple little resort. So she told me that they were going to be there. Well, since I've been going there for so many years, I know the staff and they're really very kind to me. And it's almost like a second home. They're like my second family, just wonderful, wonderful people. And we've become friends. So when I found out that my sister was going to be there, and let me add this other little fact about this experience. My sister had just become cancer free after really struggling with cancer and going having to have a mastectomy and really struggled lots of infections and serious health problems and so I thought this would be a time where I could really bless her. So I worked with my friends there at the resort and we planned a special occasion for my sister and her husband when they were there. And I'm going to tell you a little bit about it. It was so great. Every Monday, the resort gives a little party for all of the guests. And I knew that my sister and Ron, when they, were, when they got there, that they would go to this little party which they did. And then my friend who works there at the resort, her name is Charl, she took the hand of Nancy and the hand of Ron and she walked them down to the beach. And there on the beach, and I had prearranged all of this, I'd covered all the expense, there on the beach was this beautiful canopy 
with flowers and gauze going, blowing in the breeze. And under the canopy was this beautiful table with fine china, fine linens, a beautiful tropical flower arrangement, and a lovely meal. There was a guitarist playing music. And so my friend Charles led them to the beach for this lovely, romantic sunset dinner on the beach. Nancy and Ron had no idea that that was going to happen to them. It was a surprise, but they were there. They were at the right place at the right time so they could receive this unexpected blessing. The same is for you. God has unexpected surprises, lessons, and blessings for you but you need to be at the right place at the right time. You need to enter into the fasting experience, opening up your heart, submitting to God, spending time with him in his word, the, the materials, the study materials that you have been led to use during your time of fasting. When you are there, when you are open to the experience, open to the possibilities, he will bless you. He will bless you. He has so much that he wants to give you. He has surprises, things that you can never imagine for yourself. He wants to give yourself, give to you. So you want to make sure you set yourself up for success. More than you know awaits you. Submit all of who you are to God, including your physical body. Now, you'll want to learn about this. You'll want to enter into the experience, but I can give you some hints. On the first couple days, it might be kind of rough. You might not be used to it. There might be some, some of your spiritual muscles that might be a little weak. And again, think of this as a journey. You're starting on a journey. I want to give you an experience that I had a number of years ago. It was my journey on what's called El Camino de Santiago. That is a 500-mile walk across northern Spain. It starts in France on the eastern side of the Pyrenees Mountains. And on the first day, you climb up these mountains. It's a very, very steep incline. I had prepared for the walk. I had the right shoes, the right walking sticks. I had a backpack. I had the right clothing, toiletries, all of those things. And I had already done a lot of long distance walking and so my muscles were prepared. But I wasn't used to this kind of very steep incline. So those first couple days, it was tough. I concentrated and focused a lot on how my body felt. Well, the same will be for you as you start your journey on your Daniel fast, your time of extended prayer and fasting. The first few days, you might be a lot more concerned about your body. You might have some aches and pains with caffeine withdrawal or sugar withdrawal. You might you know, be missing some foods that you normally have, or you might experience some cravings. But you want to keep going because you have a destination that you want to reach. The same with my journey on El Camino de Santiago. I wanted to get across Spain. I wanted to walk those 500 miles, and I wanted to reach Santiago. That was on the western side of Spain. So I needed to keep walking step by step, bit by bit, day by day. The same for you. You want to get through these tough periods and then it will get to the point where you don't notice your body anymore. You get into a routine and that's what happened to me on the El Camino de Santiago. It got to the point that I didn't pay much attention to any kinds of aches and pains. I was eager to walk because the blessings were so great. The scenery, the physical experience, my time praying with God, the friends I met, the experiences I had, they were the blessing. So the walking part, the physical part, becomes much less important. And the same will happen for you. The physical part will be much less important after you get through those first few days. But you've got to keep going. Don't stop. Don't let those first obstacles get you down. Keep moving forward because there is so much that awaits you. So many blessings. 
you want to make sure you pack all you need for your journey. Have your purpose for your fast. Have your study materials. Have your the foods you need. So you also want to prepare your heart. Think of yourself if you're maybe, let's say, look at a tennis match. If you get out onto that court and start playing tennis, you don't want to do it halfway. You want to play hard. You want to give it your best. That's the same with the fast. You want to give it your best. Don't settle for a mediocre experience. If you enter into the fast with a mediocre attitude, you will receive mediocre spiritual experiences. You want great experiences. The other thing is don't wait on God. So many people enter into kind of a passive experience saying, well, I want to see what God does for me. But if you look at the scriptures, you will see that we have a part. We have a first part. The scriptures say, walk in the spirit. So then we can experience the blessings of God. It says, knock, see, knock and you will receive. Seek and you will find. You see, it's our first step. We don't wait, just kind of sit there passively doing nothing, waiting to see what God is going to do. Instead, we engage, we participate, we spend time with him, we seek him. The Bible says that he blesses those, he rewards those who diligently seek him. So diligently seek him, go after it, play hard, prepare your heart, plan that you are going to be fully engaged in this experience. Then you will have a great experience. Also, look at the opportunity. Look at the positive things that are available to you, the things that you will learn, rather than spending so much time thinking about the negative things like, oh, I can't have this, and I can't have this, and what am I going to do without my coffee? What am I going to do without my Pepsi? That is all negative. Instead, put all of that behind you. Say, I'm walking away from that for a time because I want the great blessings that are available to me. Stay positive. Don't go the negative route. You want to go for the meat and leave the milk behind. Now, clearly, I'm not talking about physical meat. I'm not talking about the kind that we can't have on the Daniel Fast. I'm talking about the kind of meat that is available to you, the spiritual meat. You don't want to be like a baby where you can only get milk. You're not a baby. You want to be a mature Christian. You want to be able to get some meaty truth from the Lord so you can chew on it and understand it for yourself so that it can change your life. So one of the things you want to be involved with is planning and preparing. Set aside time. Every day you want to have time to spend with the Lord. You want to be able to study. You want to be able to pray. You want to be able to spend time meditating on the truths that he shows you. That's how you get those truths, those seeds of truth planted into your heart. You want those seeds to be able to be deeply rooted so that they can make a difference in your life. Make a decision that you are going to really go for it. You aren't going to be kind of, like I say, mediocre about your fasting experience. You want it to be a great experience. You want to prepare your body. Start getting off caffeine. Take Get all the sugar out of your life. All of those kinds of things. You want to prepare. Make sure you're drinking lots of water so that your body is ready for this change in the dietary things that you'll be eating. Plan your menus and your meal times. Like I mentioned before, keep your meals simple, but it is really important for you to plan them because when you are hungry and you're, you know, kind of searching for something to eat, you're really vulnerable to make poor choices at that time. So plan your meals, even if you plan just a few meals at a time. Go to the book. There's lots of recipes. They're great recipes. I also give you suggestions about planning ahead, about how you can simplify the meal preparation process. Also, make sure you've got snacks with you. Never, you know, never get hungry. Make sure that you are in good shape, but plan some snacks. Have little baggies of nuts. Like I, one of my, my favorites is to use those little Ziploc snack 
baggies and put like a quarter cup of raw almonds or a quarter cup of raw walnuts in them. You will be amazed at when you have a little hunger pang and you just eat those slowly using the, some of the guidelines that I teach you in the Daniel Fast for Weight Loss. It is amazing how your body is satisfied. It doesn't really take very much when you plan ahead and use the tools that I teach you. Also, I encourage you to use the menu planner that I send you. It's a simple little sheet that I use with my Choose Life Now people. That's a Choose Life Now is a program that I have. That it came out of the Daniel Fast. People wanted to know how they could continue on their lifestyle of health. So I created the Choose Life Now program. But this is a menu planner, and it's just a really great way to plan ahead. Now, next time on this study we are going to move deeper into the spiritual part of your experience. You're going to learn more about your body. Now, this isn't the your anatomy or how all of your inner parts work. This is who you are, that you are God's dwelling place. You are not your own. You were bought with a price, and the Holy Spirit lives in you. God has called you to be the caretaker of his dwelling place. If you think about that, that you are not your own, you are bought with a price, you are his. How beautiful is that? You are his. Isn't that lovely? You are God's. He owns you. You are his. What a beautiful relationship to have. You are God's. Think of that. Think of that truth but you are his, and the, his Holy Spirit dwells inside of you, and he has called you to be the caretaker of his dwelling place. That is a high honor and a responsibility. Also, we're going to talk about your body image and who you are in Christ. In today's world, we are constantly comparing ourselves with the people we see in magazine covers or on television or even friends or family or people we see walking on the street and we compare our body with that body or those bodies, those images. And it is not a good way to go. Instead, you are going to learn about who you are in Christ and the beautiful creation that God made when he created you. It is a powerful life-changing experience. Now, before I leave you, I just want to give you a couple tips about the Daniel Fast and what you can do, particularly as it relates to the Daniel Fast for weight loss. First of all, you want to think about changing your mind, changing your thinking. You want the seeds of truth, those little seeds of truth that you learn in this process, the principles you learn in the book, you want those seeds to get into your thinking and then nurture them. Change your mind about how you relate to food. Change your mind about what you know what is good to eat, what is good food. You want to change your mind. And so that you are thinking about good food, good food to nourish your body. So let those seeds of truth get into your mind, get into your thinking, and start declaring God's word, God's truth over yourself. Say these things out loud, whether you're in your car or at home and whatever, but just say statements like, I am so thankful that I am in walking into a journey of health. I am so thankful that God loves me. I am so thankful that I give my body the food it needs for good health and nutrition. I am so thankful for the work that this cleansing process is going on in my body. I am so thankful for how God made me. Just keep declaring things. Let the, the God's word, God's truth just flow into you. And then another tip is to don't get hungry. Eat three good meals a day. Use the meals, the, the Daniel Fast recipes that are in the book, and then you keep make sure you have a few snacks like nuts or a piece of fruit or some vegetables with you all the time. Don't get hungry because when you're hungry, that's when you can make some unwise choices. Make sure you've always got good quality foods that comply with the Daniel Fast guidelines 
to reach out for so that they are available to you and you don't have to have that time of craving, that time of temptation where you might give in. Okay, let me close us in prayer. And I am so happy that you are with us. Father, I thank you for every single person who is on this lesson today, Father. I thank you for the work that you are doing in their hearts that you are doing in their minds, that you are doing in their bodies. Father, we praise you for your beautiful and right way of living. We thank you for the truth that you give us. We thank you for the great life that is available to us as we take your hand and walk in the Spirit with you. Father, you are so good, so loving. Everything you do is good for us, and we are thankful. Bless this time, Father. Bless every single person and their Daniel fast. And we ask that you give us the truths, the insights, and the things that will help us grow, that we can take into our everyday life to serve you better and to be in absolute praise and, and honor and worship for you. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, friends, I'll see you next time. Bye for now.